My view on all of this is that we desperately need to include Native American experiences and where possible Native American perspectives, not just so that we can tell the Native American side of the story, but that without that side of the story and without those alternative and multiple perspectives, the American story is an impoverished tale of history. Um, we've talked a lot about myths. I think if you're looking at the history of the West and you don't include his Indians, that's a myth. An example that I like, and I've, I've used it a lot, and I think it's a, it's, it's a great illustration of that, is, is a story that comes from the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And it involves uh, two people. It involves a, an American soldier, actually who was a German immigrant, and it involves a Cheyenne Indian. Um, and the soldier was a guy called Charles Windolph, and he finds himself in June of 1876 with George Armstrong Custer and, and Major Reno in the Battle of the Little Bighorn. In that battle, the American command divides and attacks the village from different directions. Reno's command goes in first and is repulsed. They're driven back up onto the bluffs and pinned down by the Lakota and Cheyenne warriors. And it looks like it's all over for them. And then suddenly the Indians all wheel away and go to the north end of the village where Custer is attacking and they kill Custer. That night, the survivors of Reno's command uh, who are you know, suffering from thirst, they don't know what's happened to Custer, they know something horrible has happened and they're expecting to be killed the next morning. The next morning, um, the Indians break camp and move off and a relief column arrives and Charles Windolph survives. He records his experiences and he remembers that night on that hill and he says, and we listened to the drumming and the dancing down in the villages as the Indian, you know, obviously is implying the Indian savages uh, conducted their war dances. Because in his imagination and his situation, this, is, this must be what was going on. A Cheyenne Indian by the name of Wooden Lake, who was in that village, who participated in the fight, also in later life recorded what was going on. In his case, he, he told his story to someone who wrote it down. And Wooden Lake tells us, yes, there was drumming and singing. And what was going on was the Cheyenne and Lakota women were mourning for the deaths of their husbands and brothers and sons uh, during the battle. And I think that's a very important corrective. It's not to say that Charles Wind Windolph was distorting history or lying. I mean, I think his terror was very real. But getting that alternative perspective from the other side of the story, I think, helps us to um, just adjust the focus of our historical lens a little bit and understand that this was what happened there was a tragedy not just for the soldiers, the families of the soldiers that were killed, but also for the families of the, of the Indians who won the, the battle. And I think those things are always important in, in history, uh, to, to have that kind of un understanding and sympathy for all of the people who are involved.